Okay, so now following up on the, the information we got from the last video about color separation, I want to take some of this inspiration from physical printing with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks, CMYK, and apply them to this image, which right now is made of light. It's made of red, green, and blue lights of my computer monitor at different intensities. So in Photoshop, it's very important before you play with this to save your work, right? And what I don't want to play with is actually the type. What I want to play with is just the background and the spot illustration, just to show you. So I'm going to turn off the type layers and just color separate these. So you can see all the different kind of subtle color variations that are in there in my spot illustration and in my background. My background, which is pretty much composited, and my spot illustration, which is all hand colored with clean line work. If I flatten that image now, and this is dangerous to do, so one way you can do it is to um, save it as a new file, which is probably smart. So I'm going to say Carl Assignment 8 if you want to play with color separation. And I'm going to call it color separation. Okay, once it's saved as something new, then I know I can I can flatten it and change it and not lose all of the versatility I got from my poster design from having, you know, if I wanted to change the background, things like that. So now I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to flatten the image. Just so it's a really simple, it's there or it's not kind of image. Now I want to go to window and I want to look at channels for my poster. So channels, which is right next to layers, if you're in your default view, channels shows you the different lights that are making up your color. So if I turn off these lights, it will show me in grayscale what the blue lights are doing in the computer. So it's kind of hard to explain, but where the blue light is white, <laughs> That means it's turned on at 100%. Where the blue light is black, it means it's turned off. It's at 0%. Right? The light. So you'll see the only place where the blue just doesn't exist in my image is in the, the outline of the blood in very particular areas. Now, when I switch it to the red, you'll see that the red is turned on at 100% you know, for the white, because you need all the lights on at 100% for white light. And then the place it's turned off is basically the black outline in the chicken. So the red light and the blue light are doing very different jobs. And if you overlap them together, this is what they're doing. So you get strong red here with no black with no blue and you get strong blue here with no red. But this doesn't look very good because in order to get white you also need green light. So once you turn on green light then you get all of them. But green on its own just looks like this. And green is only on at 100% wherever I have white because I don't have anything that's solid green in my image. And then green is the opposite of red on the color wheel, right? So it's definitely turned off just like the blue is turned off where I have the strong red. But it's there about halfway everywhere else. Because green with red is how you get yellow in light. So if I turn red and green together, I have lots of yellows, but I don't have any of the blues. If I turn green and blue together, Actually, I think it's green and blue that overlap to give you yellows, but you see, it all comes together to give me the millions of colors, right? 
So why do I tell you all that? Well, because what we want is to change this image from being RGB, red, green, blue. We're gonna take its image mode and change it to CMYK color, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. We're gonna say, okay. So we're changing the mode. It's gonna actually change the colors slightly, like almost imperceptibly, it depends on the colors, but this limits the colors that the computer can show. Because now look at our channels. They are no longer RGB channels. It is no longer an RGB kind of file. It is a CMYK file. And now if I click on these different channels, so it shows me how the computer is understanding this information. Now it shows me what the black ink is doing. So this is what black inks are doing. <laughs> and where they are, where they are dark, that's where they're turned on. So that's the black film work for this image. Not very strong black. There's a lot of color in my image, not a whole lot of black. This is what the yellows are doing with the black. So you see how it's starting to look a little bit more like this, right? With these inks layered on top of each other one by one. Here's the yellow with the red with the black. And here's the cyan, which fleshes it out. What if I just do the, the cyan with the yellow? Then I get these overlaps, right? What if I just do the magenta with the black? Then I get this. Okay, but there's a difference here. This still isn't the same as printing because here, if I just look at, let's say the yellow and I turn it off so that yellow is the only thing that's showing, it looks really dark. And that's because wherever it's 100% black, that's where you're printing with 100% yellow. And in order to print red, this is actually called 100% red. You need 100% yellow and 100% magenta to get that red. So you see this is the magenta film work and it's also solid black right there. You need 100% yellow and 100% magenta to get that red. You really don't need any cyan to get that red. And you don't need any black really. So there's just very faint amounts of those. But the problem is that let's just look at the black. You see how the black also has grays in it. But there's no way to use black ink and print gray. We don't get to thin it out on a printer. So this is what we need to do. We need to take one channel at a time, and then we have to do this process to it. This is the complicated way that I make easier for you later. So now we take, we isolate it to just one channel. It could be any channel, but we'll start with black because that's at 45 degrees. And we go to image and we go to mode and we go to grayscale. We say, okay, whoops. I actually have to delete these other channels. So it's not enough to turn them off. I have to delete them so there's only black left. Okay, then I have to go to image mode grayscale. And it doesn't change anything. You know, it was already grayscale, but now I'm, I'm change it to that mode so it only sees gray values. Now I have to change the gray scale to bitmap mode. And bitmap's also what I want you to know. Bitmap means that it only sees black or white, no gray. And I'm going to change the output to match at 350. And how am I going to separate these grays into halftone or into dots? I want to use a halftone screen. I don't want to use the index diffusion I don't want to use a custom pattern. I want to use the mechanical halftones. So then it's going to ask me, how many dots do you want to fit per inch? I want these dots to be pretty solidly visible. So I'm going to keep that at a frequency of 20. And then the angle, because this is black, is going to be 45 degrees. And then I'm going to use round. And then it converts it. There, there you go into halftone dots.
Let's do it one more time. Mode adjust to bitmap. But this time I'm going to do it only to 300, which is professional printing, so it's how my defaults are set up. And then I'm going to use ellipses. And this is what most matches printing. Because ellipses will break into the edges. And that will give you kind of the most vintage look. Now that's just black. So then I have to save that. I now have to go back in my history. I've saved it as black and it's separated into just solid ink, right? So it either puts it down or it doesn't. And now I have to go back to my history to before I deleted And then I need to do it to my yellows. So I need to drag everything else to the trash, except for yellow. And then I have to convert this to grayscale. And then I have to convert it to bitmap. And then I'm going to use these same defaults. And so now this is done with solid ink. But because this isn't black, I'm now going to uh, convert it back to grayscale at a one-to-one -one ratio, so nothing changes, then back to CMYK color. It's still all solid. And then I'm going to select all the white, contiguous turned off, go to my layers, say select inverse and duplicate, and then turn off the background. <laughs> and then I'm going to color overlay all of that, those dots with yellow. So I have to go through all those steps in order to make it print ready for offset lithography printing. And I'm almost, I'm almost done. So now I save that. As my yellow PNG, because I need that transparency. So if I save it as a JPEG, I can use it. Oh, so this is very interesting. So you can save um, an RGB file as a PNG, but you can't save a CMYK file as a PNG. So if I want to save it as a PNG, which I do, I have to convert it also back to RGB. And then I can save it. as a PNG file. So it takes a long time to kind of learn the ins and outs of doing this. I'll show you what the... So this was the complicated setup. In order to get white, yellow, and then black. Now here's the problem. I did yellow at 45 degrees, just like I did black. And so the problem is they're not mixing as well as they should. You see how the dots are falling right on top of each other? So that is why halftone angles matter. So when I made the black when I made the yellow layer and converting it to halftones, instead of leaving it at 45 degrees, I should have put zero degrees. So what is my shortcut for all of this? Well, let's go back to before I flattened it, or right after I flattened it. And I'll show you my shortcut. And I have to close this. OK, my shortcut is I go to Actions, and I go to an action I've created called Carl Color Separations. 